Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here, your source for gaming, tech, news, and reviews. In today's video, we are taking a look at the Flirt case and seeing how it performs on the Raspberry Pi 4 8GB version. Let's get started. The Flirt case is designed to keep your Raspberry Pi cool and do it silently. There are no fans in this case. This case acts as a full heat sink for your Raspberry Pi. There's a metal post inside of this case that touches the CPU on the Raspberry Pi. And what it does is it pulls the heat from the CPU chip and disperses it around the outside of the case. This case is metal and it will get hot in order to keep your Pi cool. For this video, I have two different versions of the Flirt case, the standard silver and black edition and the Kodi edition. Both of these cases do function the exact same way. The Kodi case is an all black case with the Kodi logo on the top. I think this case looks extremely sharp and I really like the look of it overall. Inside of the case, there is a thermal pad as well as screws to attach the bottom to the case. The black paint scheme continues on the inside of this case as well. And here is a look at the standard edition of the Flirk case. Most people are probably used to this look myself included. The insides of this Flirk case are the exact same as the Kodi version except for the color. Fun fact here, if you have both versions of the Flirk case, you can actually swap out the tops. So if you don't like the Kodi logo on the top of the black box, you can swap it out for the flat black top and make a completely blacked out Raspberry Pi case. Installing the Raspberry Pi in the Flirt case is relatively simple and straightforward. It's actually gotten a little easier over the years. There is a thermal pad that is included. Some people attach the thermal pad immediately to the post of the Flirt case, but I do recommend attaching it to the Raspberry Pi instead. And that is because the thermal pad is not the full size of the post in the center of the Flirt case. So if you mount the thermal pad to the Flirt case first, you run the risk of it not making full contact with the CPU on the Raspberry Pi. If the thermal pad is not making full contact with the CPU on the Raspberry Pi, you may run into cooling issues. So mount that thermal pad to the Raspberry Pi first and then remove the plastic coating on the outside of the thermal pad. Once your thermal pad is mounted on your Raspberry Pi looking nice and pretty, you can insert it into the Flirk case. I do recommend inserting it on an angle and not flat so that the outputs here, for example, the HDMI out and the USB-C ports go into the holes first and then the rest of the Raspberry Pi will easily fall into place and in the correct position. Once you've inserted the Raspberry Pi, you can gently press on the Raspberry Pi just to make sure it's in there securely. Don't put too much force here because you might accidentally crack the board. After that, you can put the back of the Flirt case on, screw in the screws, and then you're good to go. I'd also recommend not over tightening the screws and just tightening them up nice and snugly. And here is what the Flirt case looks like when the Raspberry Pi is installed correctly. All of the holes line up with the outputs really nicely. Everything looks good. So I have my Raspberry Pi 4 8 GB model mounted into the Flirt case. I'm currently running Raspberry Pi OS and I do have my system monitoring up and running. Up here is the temperature of my system currently as well as the current CPU usage. And here is the command I'm going to be running to do the stress test on this video. I will leave it in the description of this video as well if you are curious. And the current temperature in this room is about 25 degrees Celsius. We're just sitting slightly under 80 degrees Fahrenheit. So hopefully you can see the thermometer right there just for reference. You can see all of the cores are maxed out. I did not overclock the Raspberry Pi at this point. The temperature is currently sitting at 52 degrees Celsius. I'll continue monitoring this throughout the test. Now I'm part way through the test and it looks like the temperature is remaining fairly stable between 58 and 56 degrees. So after this stress test, we only made it as high as 60 degrees and it was maintaining between 59 and 60 degrees at the very end. I'm really impressed at how well the Flirt case handled this stress test, considering it's only passive cooling. Now the Raspberry Pi 4 was not overclocked, so I'm going to overclock it now and perform the exact same test. Now I've overclocked the Raspberry Pi to 2.147 gigahertz. I'm going to run the exact same test. I'm expecting higher temperatures here, but I am curious to see how the Flirt case does. 
just a few minutes into this test and we have already exceeded the temperatures from the last test. This is not a good sign so far. The Flirt case is actually extremely hot to the touch, so I'm a little bit worried about this test, but we'll continue it on and see how it does. Temperatures have now creeped up over 70 degrees and honestly, touching this Flirt case uh, is a bit of a chore. I can't really even touch the metal part of it because it is so hot. I'm having to hold this by the two plastic pieces on the end. I'm actually really starting to worry about this, but we'll continue on with the test for science. So after about 20 minutes of testing, we got to a total of 75 degrees Celsius for the CPU temperature. This is a little higher than I did want to see, but at the same time, it is under the 80 degree threshold where the system starts to throttle. Now for my overall thoughts on the Flirt case. I'll start out with the good here. First and foremost, I really like how this case looks. It's a really smart looking case. It's minimalistic, it's clean. All of the holes line up really, really nice. Even the Cody version of this case looks really sharp. I really like how well these are built. I have about five of these. I have three for the Raspberry Pi 3 and two for the Raspberry Pi 4 and I've had no issues so far. Now the two for the Raspberry Pi 4 are brand new, so I wouldn't expect any issues at this point, but again, my Raspberry Pi 3 flirt cases have held up very, very well. And I really, really like how effective this is as a heat sink. You can really feel the case heating up when the Raspberry Pi is working hard. And now going into the bad, while this does function very well as a heat sink, it is only passive cooling. So if you are doing some crazy things with your Raspberry Pi, or if it's in a hot environment, this may not be enough alone to cool the Raspberry Pi. Overall, under normal circumstances, if you're just running stock Retro Pi, or if you're running Kodi, or if you're running Raspberry Pi OS and not doing any overclocking whatsoever, this will suit your needs just fine. This will do a great job at keeping the Raspberry Pi cool. But if you are doing anything crazy with your Raspberry Pi and you're doing some crazy overclocks and stressing it out, this case is probably not going to suit your needs. It did a great job at keeping the Pi cool for about 20 minutes, but at the same time, anything over that, and this temperature was bound to get above 80 degrees and start throttling. Another thing to consider is how hot this case gets. I did not have any tools to measure the surface temperature of the outside of this case, but holding it in my hand was actually burning my hand. I had to set it down. I could not hold the metal for an extended period of time. It was very, very hot. And while I probably wouldn't go as far as to say this is a fire hazard, at the same time, I would be conscious of where I'm placing other items in proximity to this flirt case because it does get extremely hot. So with all of that information considered, I will recommend this flirt case to the average Raspberry Pi user. If you're not doing any overclocking, you should be absolutely fine. If you are overclocking, go for something like this, just an active cooling solution where you will be much more successful with your overclocks and overall performance. Anyways, that is all I have for today. Let me know what you think about the Flirt case and the Cody version of the Flirt case in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button. Check out my other videos. Thank you, everyone. Take care.